What's up everybody, this is Adam with Reese Customs and today we're gonna to be making this material right here, this exact material. So I have another channel on my page, uh, Making Wood and Resin Blanks. It's by far my most popular video, but it left a ton of questions. It's a short highlight type video. There's a lot of questions involved. So I needed more material, so I decided why not record the entire process and step by step show you how to do it. That's what this video is. It's kind of lengthy, but it shows everything you need to know exactly how I make this material. So with all that being said, there's one more thing before we get to the video, and that is if you're watching this, if you like this kind of stuff, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'm trying to grow this channel, trying to grow this page, and if you'll hit that subscribe button, it's totally free, doesn't cost anything. You're not going to get mailers in the mail with talking about your car's extended warranty or anything like that. Um, but it will really help me out and I'll appreciate it. Also, if you like the video, interact with it, hit the thumbs up, comment, whatever. That really helps YouTube's algorithm and pushes this video to a wider audience. So that'll help. So with all that being said, let's get to it. What's up guys, this is Adam with Reese Customs. Today we're gonna to be making some uh, epoxy and wood blanks for uh, knife scales or pin blanks or other little projects like that I'm gonna be doing. Um, we're gonna be using Pro Marine Supplies uh, tabletop epoxy resin, it's a thicker resin. Um, I've got these pieces of wood that I've stabilized using a cactus juice stabilizer. I've got these molds that are HDPE molds. What these are made of are, uh, I bought a big cutting board from Sam's. You can buy us like eight bucks, cut it up, make these molds with it. We've got a pressure pot. I've got mold release, um, just in case. It's not supposed to stick to this, but just in case. And I also have an assortment of Alumilite dyes and uh, powders. And so what I'm gonna be doing, this is a piece of Buckeye Burl. It's been stabilized, like I said. So it's gonna go in this mold. I'm gonna glue it down with hot glue Mix up a, uh, I'm gonna go with a blue translucent, translucent and an ocean blue powder for that one. For these, I've got these other three pieces of something. I don't exactly know what they are. Uh, redwood, I think. This is something with a whole lot of curls, real pretty. And I'm not sure what this is. But I'm gonna glue these in here like this. I'm gonna glue them in so they don't move. Um, just a little dab of hot glue. Uh, and then I'm gonna go with a green and a little bit of a copper with that. So I think that's gonna be awesome too. So, um, that being said, I've got everything set up so I don't have to be going all over the place when I, when I uh, get ready to do everything. But that being said, this is a, a slower setting epoxy. It's not like, I like to use Alumilite. Um, Alumilite Clear or whatever it's called, it sets in like seven minutes. It makes very pretty epoxies. The colors don't run and mix. So you can do multiple color pours and all that stuff. It looks really nice. This stuff on the other hand um, is a slower setting. So we've probably got like a 30 or 40 minute work time, something like that. It's a one to one ratio. So. It's not a huge rush, but I like to just have everything kind of organized and ready um, for when we do start. So I'm gonna get one more thing, which is the air hose, because uh, we do pressurize the pressure pot to 40 PSI uh, while the epoxy's in there. So let me get that and uh, we'll get started. Okay, so first we're gonna go ahead and uh, hot glue these in. I'm gonna hit it with some mold release. just to be safe. All right, so I'm gonna put this, yeah, this this face up and put a little dab of super glue, I mean hot glue. Definitely don't wanna use super glue. Put that there. And that's just gonna keep it in, keep it from floating, things like that, and the epoxy. Same thing with this, just put a little dab here. dab here and a little 
down to here. There. Now for the epoxy. So what I'm going to do is mix up about a cup at a time. About a cup worth. So it's one to one, so I'm just going to eyeball it because it says by volume on this one, not by weight. Some of them are by weight, you need to measure them, but this one is by volume. So that's probably enough. Now for the hardener. Yep. So and the secret is not a secret. If you have a little bit with this kind of stuff, like some of them are very particular about um, ratios. This one, if you're a little bit, you're not exactly, you know, if say you're a hundred percent here and 98 percent here or, or whatever, it's not going to make a difference really. All right, so now we got A and B. I'm actually going to pour A into B in this case because it is much thicker and I don't want to leave any on the inside of the cups or anything like that. Stuck against the wall of the cup or so hopefully and what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix up first, then we'll add the colors. move these out of the way. So I'm going to put a little bit of this blue translucent, which is already all over everything in the shop. That's probably enough. And then I'm going to take this ocean blue. If you can see this, it is very, very pretty. Now we mix some more. Don't do that. Yeah, I might have put a little bit too much blue translucent in there. Now I wanted it dark. I was actually going to go with like a purple, but I don't know if you can see that. That is crazy cool looking. So after we put in the pressure pot, it's going to be about a day. So we'll come back tomorrow and uh, open it up and see what we got. But that is really cool looking. So let's just wait a second. I don't, eh, I could pour it now, it doesn't matter. We've got enough setup time that we can go ahead and mix up our next batch. Man, that's cool looking. Look at that. So, now I just hope I made enough.
Yeah, we're dripping a little bit. That's so cool looking. I'm just going to go ahead and set it down here on this bottom shelf. Right. So now we're going to do uh, this one. But I'm thinking, I really like that blue. So I'm going to use some blue and some green and some copper. I'm thinking we're going to need about the same amount, which is, oh, let's use this cup. About a whole cup worth of this. So... Come on, baby. All right. Heavyweights. Woo! Forgot how much thinner this one was. Matter of fact, that's a little too much. That's good. So. So for these two, for this one, I'm going to do, I'm going to pour this one into, into this one just to see if it makes a difference. Probably won't. It might. It might be ruined. I might have just ruined it. Keep a trash can up under the table because it's convenient. And the reason while I'm mixing, I guess I'll go ahead and talk about the reason it's going in that pressure pot right there is because you see all, I don't know if you can see it, but doing all this mixing, we're introducing a ton of bubbles, right? We're just whipping air into it. Um, and what the pressure pot does is putting it, putting the epoxy under pressure actually forces all of those bubbles to just collapse and just uh, go away. So we do that, the pour comes out much better, much more solid, no air pockets, no air bubbles, anything like that. Whew. So one thing to note is doing it like this. So while we're mixing, we stir the size of the cup, all that stuff. When we go to pour, we won't scrape the size of the cup. The reason is, if we have any leftover unmixed part A or whatever, we don't want to scrape that down into the cup. I mean, into the mold. All right. It's probably good. Now we're going to go with some green translucent. See that? That's all I'm going to use. Then I'm going to take the green powder. And then I'm going to take a little bit of copper just because that's pretty. I don't know if you can see that. That's really pretty. I said a little bit, but I actually put like more than the actual green in there, whatever, let's take this stick out, trash, now let's stir and see what we can get, I'm always quite surprised, probably shouldn't have mixed green and brown, I'm sorry, copper. I mean, it's kind of neat though. But what I'm gonna do is put some more copper because now it just looks like 
Boy. That's kind of gross. Put a bunch of copper in there. So I'm totally changing up the game plan here. It's not what I was going to do. But there are no mistakes, just happy little accidents. It's a mosquito. Oh yeah, that's that looks better. This looks this looks sweet here. Get out of here, bug. Make sure those are still held down. They are. Oh yeah. The copper was the way to go here. Probably could have even left out the green altogether. So Trash. Look at that. That's pretty neat. Side note, I hope I have enough. Looking like no. Well, that's unfortunate. Put this blue in here too. And really, really got enough working time we can mix up a little bit more man look how cool that looks look at that that is sweet um, yeah let's mix up a tiny bit more just because there's no need in uh, having a blanks come out that are too small to be used because I didn't want to cheap out on epoxy. So I'm just going to do this right here, straight in here. Eyeball it. Yep. Take the same stir stick. Stir it real good. And for this one, I'm just going to put some straight copper. It's easier to mix when you have just a tiny bit. Not that much. Come on now, Adam. Some people might wear gloves. You know, I mentioned that already, but <clears throat> whatever. Oh, this is going to be cool here. So this is like another. So this looks like an old penny, and this looks like nothing to do with a penny. Kind of like a new penny, I guess. What I'm going to do is mix it a little, just when I pour it in. I don't know if any more, eh, a little bit come out. I just want the color. I don't need any more epoxy per se. Yep. 
That's going to be pretty cool. Before we make a mess, throw those in the trash. All right, remember we got our bottom shelf over there, mid tier here, and no top shelf for us today. Now, <clears throat> stick these into the pressure pot. being very careful. Trying to keep them as level as possible. Put the top on. Don't forget to clamp it down or it won't build pressure. I do is I close my ball valve first. Then I'll put the hose on it and then I'll slowly ease in till we get up the pressure. Press. That's it. There we go. So we'll come back tomorrow, open it up, and uh, see what we got. Crap all on the floor you can't see over here. I just hit it. All right, welcome back. It's been uh, 24 hours uh, since we put the epoxy wood blanks into the pressure pot. So now we're gonna take them out and we're gonna see what we got. Hopefully, not a disaster. So, uh, take the, uh, the air out, move it over a little. So hopefully, it smells like resin. So we bleed it off. Make sure no pressure's in it because that would be bad to open this under pressure. It'd suck. Well, never mind. Ta da! Wood. It's not stuck, so that's good. Hopefully, we're getting this on. That wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, it did leak a little bit out of the bottom of this, but look at that. That looks beautiful. It is still, eh, it's pretty, pretty solid. Look at that. That's sick. This one, on the other hand, leaked quite a bit more, it appears. So... Oh, this sucks. There we go. Just a tiny bit. You can see the blue, see where it leaked. But the hot glue did a pretty good job. Oh, that is pretty too. Oh, wow. Look at that. And I'll get some, some better close-ups. So, I don't know how these things are going to come out of here. Hopefully, they won't stick. That came off of there pretty easy, so maybe that's a good sign. But man, that looks good. That copper looks sick. That's going to be sweet. So, I think the best thing to do, uh, reach up here, is just uh, take this bad boy apart. Oh yeah, check that out. Look at that. No sticking whatsoever. So, what I did when I made these is I labeled them. A, this is two. The other one, I got another one just like this, it's one. 
So I just got A, B, C, D, and then A, B, C, D. So I put them back in the right spots because the holes aren't exactly in the same spot for each side. I'm excited about this, man. I'm, I'm like nerding out on this thing. Okay, this side not so much. So I'm thinking. Hmm. That's dangerous. Don't do that. Hmm. There we go. You just got to look in an odd direction and then press on it. It seems to work. Oh, man, that's sweet. So it, it did pick up the texture of this, but that ain't a big deal because we got to cut them and sand them and all that anyways. So. Man. I was hoping I could get it without taking it all the way apart. Oh, it made a sound. There we go. There we go. Remember, keep keep your offhand out of the line of fire. <laughs> oh, man. That little bit of blue and that wood. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that. That is sick. That's going to look sweet when it's sanded. And we're going to do that in a second. We're going to cut them all down. Sand them just a little bit and then wet them so you can kind of see what they're going to look like. That is excellent. Most excellent. I'm happy with that. But it's still, so it's still a little soft. Um, it's not fully cured, although it's pretty, pretty solid, but it's not 100% cured. This little thing right here. Let's see what this one looks like. This is like Christmas. That is just so sweet. It just doesn't stick at all. Well, I'm gonna have to sand this up flush so that this doesn't have these cracks next time. but that is so nice. Man, that's nice. You know what? I'm gonna leave this side on, just so I don't get confused, because these aren't, this one's not labeled, but. So. Oh yeah, I forgot you gotta look oddly in a different direction. <laughs> that was so stupid. We're gonna edit all this out probably. Probably not. All right. Hmm. There it goes. That could have been dangerous. I forgot about the hot glue spot. Look, you can see where it was glued. Ooh, this is gonna be, this is gonna be sweet right here. All right, so this one though, oh man, that, whew. I don't even know what I wanna use it for, but it's gonna be freaking wicked, whatever. Oh, that could be like a sweet ring. I don't know, but I'm going to put these back together for now, just so I don't lose any pieces. I'm not going to tighten them. 
all the way because I'm going to take them back off in a minute. Off camera and send everything flush, and I'm probably going to make some more because that is beautiful. That copper is just, man, I'm telling you, when you see it. And we'll just fast forward all those parts. So D and D. This one's actually ready to use again. I'm very, very happy with these. Totally not sponsored by Ryobi. I just bought these because I like them. That's not to say if Ryobi would call me up and was like, hey, let's pay you to make videos, I'd be like, heck yeah. That's okay. Probably don't cut all this crap out anyways, you know. Nobody wants to see somebody hobbling together a box. That's what I wanted to avoid. I don't know how long before these things strip out. So... I don't want to go crazy torquing them down or anything. All right, well, I'm just going to set these back in here, get them out of the way. Just put this back like this. For now. And somebody's playing music super loud going down the road. And I'm like a hundred yards, at least a hundred yards off the road. So if I can hear it, it's way too loud. This is cool, man. This is just sick. I know, I know I'm kind of like acting like a nerd about this, but this is, when you see this, <laughs> I got two little air bubbles, but that's fine. Look at that. Hopefully. This one you can't tell yet. All right. Okay, so I cut them loose on the bandsaw. Uh, now we're going to sand them up.
And here they are. I don't know if you can see that. I put a little uh, oil on them just to make them show up a little better, but that is crazy cool. Look at that. That is sweet looking. This is my favorite though. It's like a mountain. This one's cool too. It's like it's floating. It looked really cool when it's shaped because there's all kind of crevices and stuff in there. Um, same with this one and then this one. I may can get a knife handle out of this. I don't know. If I cut it down the middle and then put liners on it, I can get a knife handle, but it's kind of thin otherwise. Make a wicked looking pin though. And that is it. So was that cool or what? Now you know exactly what it takes to make material just like this. So if you're still here, thank you for watching. I know it was a long video, but hopefully it was entertaining. Hopefully you got something out of it. If you did, let me know in the comments below. And like I said at the beginning of the video, if you enjoyed this kind of stuff, please consider subscribing. And until next time, have a good one.